Hello everyone and welcome to the last day before the World Chess Championship match in Dubai starts. Uh, we're gonna have Magnus Carlsen, the reigning world champion, defending his title against the challenger Yanni Pomichi of Russia. And uh, today I decided to show you not one but two games and these are the only two games Magnus ever lost in a World Chess Championship match. So we're gonna show uh, the one uh, from 2014 match against Anand and the one uh, from, the Lond uh, from the New York match against uh, Sergei Karyakin uh, in uh, 2016. Uh, so as you know... Uh, this will be Carlsen's fifth World Chess Championship match. He played four of them. Uh, the first one against Anand in 2013, when, where he won his World Chess Championship title. He won three games and lost zero games. So that was a very clean uh, victory. And then Anand uh, uh, challenged him back in 2014. They played in Sochi in Russia. Magnus uh, again won three games, but Anand was able to win one game. Uh, and it was a pretty, pretty impressive one. This is the one that we're going to show. Then we're going to show the one against um, uh, Sergei Karyakin uh, that was played in, in London. In, uh, sorry, in New York in 2016. Uh, it was uh, game eight of the match. First seven games were drawn. Then uh, Karyakin won the eighth game. And then Magnus was uh, successful in retaliating in game 10. Uh, then the classical portion of the match ended in a draw. And then, of course, Magnus defeated Karyakin in the rapid uh, tie breaks. And then, of course, uh, there was the match against Fabi in London where all 12 games ended in a draw. And then Magnus again uh, won the rapid tie breaks. And now we have the 2021 match in Dubai against Nepo where we will not be having 12 games. We will have a, we'll be having 14 classical games which means there's a uh, well a bit of a bigger chance that the, the the classical world chess championship is actually decided in classical time format and not in rapid tie breaks but still uh, you know I, I wouldn't count on it it's possible uh, nepo style is a bit different he is you know playing uh, a, a lot faster he is choosing riskier lines so we could be seeing uh, you know a, a win here and there but uh, you know it's still it's still hard to you know dig up a win in, in classical time format so we'll see what happens and will this uh, be yet another uh, world Chess championship match decided in rapid time time uh, time format or you know god forbid armageddon or will it actually end in uh, in classical time format uh, that's uh, you know that's what we'll be enjoying for for the next three weeks but now let's check out what it takes to beat magnus carlsen in a world chess championship match the first game we're going to show is anand versus carlsen this is a game three of their uh, world chess championship match in sochi russia uh, so let's see how the game went uh, so the, the match started by uh, first game being a draw then magnus won the second game game and then Anand retaliated in game three so let's see how he did it uh, uh, Anand started with d4 we have knight to f6 by Magnus c4 e6 knight to f3 and d5 so a normal queen's gambit declined knight to c3 bishop to e7 and now bishop to f4 going for the Harvitz attack uh, not the standard bishop to g5 but uh, a bit a bit of a sharper idea bishop to f4 and it seems like uh, uh, knight to b5 is a very scary threat, but I'm just quickly going to show if anyone plays this against you, you can you can safely castle here, it doesn't matter. If he goes knight b5, uh, you just invite him to, to go knight c7, just c6, knight c7, and now bishop to b4 check, and you win. There's really no good way to defend this. Uh, you can block with the queen, or you lose your queen. If you move the bishop, you lose the knight on c7, and if you move the knight, then e5 here you uh, block the, the bishop, so now you're ready to capture the knight, and if bishop captures, then knight e4. The bishop no longer defends the knight, so now you're threatening bishop captures on d2, and if the bishop goes back, queen f6, now attacking the bishop. If the bishop moves, you're going to checkmate the white king. So here, uh, everything completely just falls apart. For example, g3, you can even just capture bishop captures on d2, bishop captures and queen captures on f2, checkmate. Uh, just in case uh, someone plays this uh, against you. But okay, uh, here, of course, Anand continued with e3, we have knight b to d7 and now uh, continuing with c5 and in the olden days if you played something like this they would uh, say you know you are completely mad uh, I, I think even Steinitz said uh, something like this at one point that this is completely anti-positional and it's uh, you know no way to play with white you can easily undermine uh, this expansion white created with, with moves like b6 of b4 then a5 uh, and it's just not good but here Anand plays it and there's a very good reason he plays it so uh, Carlsen continues uh, uh, with, uh, you know, how, how everyone would. Uh, we have c6, uh, bishop to d3, and now we have b6, challenging that uh, advanced c5 pawn. We have b4, Anand defends it, and now a5, continuing to undermine the structure. We have a3, and now bishop to a6, attacking the bishop on d3. Uh, and this is the idea of this line. Bishop captures on a6, rook captures, and b5. Anand sacrifices a pawn, uh, but for a very good reason, he's going to create a passed c pawn. So, Carlson 
captures and we have c6 now. Uh, the knight is attacked, but there's no good way to move the knight. So we're just going to play queen to c8. This is black's absolute best response. Of course, Carlson knows this. Uh, now, if you capture, then queen captures and c3 comes with check. So Anand advances his pawn all the way to c7. Uh, it's only move 14. Anand already has a pawn on c7. So, uh, you know, very, very good stuff here. And now uh, here, Magnus plays b4. Nowadays, uh, I, I think it's known that bishop captures on a3 is kind of the best move because, you know, if rook captures, b4 can be played. Uh, so we're going to play knight captures on b5. And then if a bishop back to b4 check, king to f1, then knight to e4, sort of a, a line that would be preferable for, for black. But okay, b4 is also fine. This is what Magnus played. Uh, we have knight to b5, and now comes uh, a4. Interestingly, this position was reached in the 2002 FIDE Grand Prix against Anatoly Karpov uh, and Kirill Georgiev, uh, where knight to e4 was played. Karpov was able to win this game with the white pieces, but here Magnus goes a4, now with some uh, very nasty threats of just creating a pass pawn, of course, with b3, uh, but also freeing up that a5 square to capture uh, the knight on b5, because the knight really doesn't have any, any good retreating squares. So here, rook to c1 by Anand, and knight to e4 now. Uh, putting more pressure on White's position. And now Anand throws in the, the tricky move, and that is knight to g5. Sort of offering a piece here, uh, but the, the knight can't be captured. If you capture the knight, then we're going to play bishop captures. And if knight captures uh, and if knight captures on g5, uh, you will play knight to d6, attack the queen. And now after the... Well, you have to give up the queen here. There's no other, uh, other move here. If you move the queen, we just bring another queen into the game. And after rook captures, you're going to uh, capture the rook with check and now the queen again falls so really not, nothing better to do here uh, so of course after knight to g5 Magnus just went knight d to f6 he improved his position a little bit and now Anand trades once we have knight captures knight captures and f3 now challenges Carlsen's knight here on e4 uh, and here uh, on, uh, uh, Carlsen just goes rook to a5. He attacks the knight uh, on b5 rather than just trying to, you know, uh, save his knight on e4. Also very interesting was queen to d7. Uh, same idea, we attack the knight here and now after f captures, we're gonna, now of course you can't capture right away because uh, c8 queen, you have to play rook to c8 first and now there's no good way to uh, defend this knight. Uh, if you play queen to d3 to defend it, just rook a5 and the knight will still fall, so this would be go good for black. But okay, Magnus went for the immediate rook to a5 and now uh, we have f captures on e4 by Anand and it is now uh, only as of move 20 that this position has never been reached again. Uh, so let's see how Magnus continues. Rook captures on b5, you have to recollect your piece and now comes queen captures on a4, attacking Carlsen's rook, rook to a5 and now we have queen to c6. So uh, this is uh, uh, this pass pawn is already very far advanced, but Magnus also creates his own pass pawn. He plays B captures on A3, and now he also has some A2, A1 ideas, uh, you know, floating around. Uh, Anand plays E captures on D5, and now we have Rook captures on D5. Uh, gra grabbing that pawn. Uh, we have queen captures on b6 and now queen to d7. So Carlsen has to keep an eye on that c8 square, but he also uh, needs to keep an eye on his a3 pawn. For the moment, Anand cannot threaten this pawn. Uh, so he castles here uh, and now comes rook to c8. So now you don't have to worry about um, uh, white advancing this pawn. And Magnus is ready to play bishop to d6 to, to cut off this bishop's defense of the pawn. And then maybe later on we can worry about picking up this pawn. So Anand plays rook to c6. He doesn't allow Magnus to play bishop to d6. And now uh, what do you play here? It's, it's a very difficult position for black. White has all the pressure here in this position. And probably you should play something like h6. And after rook f to c1, white will bring more pressure here. You, you could play bishop to f6 and maybe the game continues where white will always be better, but uh, black should be able to, to survive because as soon as white introduces something, white has to give up control of something, then maybe black can, you know, uh, grab onto that. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, there are even some nice tricks in the position. For example, if something like h3 is played, you can even play some like rook captures on d4. So white, white has to be careful. For example, captures, captures, uh, you can lose the queen here. 
Uh, it's of course uh, not a very serious threat, but there are threats in the position. But in the game, Magnus played g5, and this uh, makes him uh, makes his position a little bit uh, more difficult to play. Uh, Anand brought the bishop back, bishop to g3. Now comes bishop to b4, uh, offering a bishop for the rook on c6. Of course, that's not going to happen. But what Magnus is really going for is bishop to a5 to win that c7 pawn. So here, Anand goes rook to a1. Uh, and now, what do you play here? Well, it's a, it's a really difficult position to evaluate, and there really uh, isn't a move that's, you know, uh, particularly attractive for black. You know, the engine is giving g4 a sort of a way to continue playing this, but it's not uh, it's not uh, a, a move that's all that impressive. Uh, but in the game, uh, we have bishop to a5 by Magnus attacking the queen, going after that c7 pawn, but Anand just plays queen to a6. And now, what do you play here? Uh, well, there are a lot of uh, a lot of cool ideas in the position for example e4 and uh, well if this rook ever moves uh, away from the fifth rank then the bishop just falls uh, if you play something like uh, bishop uh, to, to b4 to get the bishop out of harm's way then rook to b6 is enough for for a win for white you're attacking the bishop also rook to b8 uh, will be a terrible threat so magnus continued with his pawn. he played bishop captures on c7 but now queen back to c4 and now you can't move the bishop because rook captures on c8 will just win and your bishop is attacked three times. So here we have e5, uh, Magnus now blocks the bishop's diagonal, bishop captures on e5, and now rook captures on e5. He had to give up the exchange to survive a little bit longer, but now after d captures on e5, uh, we have queen to e7 by Magnus, and now uh, Anand plays e6, uh, saying that uh, you can't really capture this, um, uh, so, so what are you gonna uh, what are you gonna play here? Uh, Magnus played king to f8. He doesn't want uh, his king on, on this diagonal, and now comes rook to c1. And it was in this position on move 34 that Magnus Carlsen uh, resigned the game, as there is nothing more to to be done here. So the bishop uh, cannot move, or if, if you don't move it, the bishop will be captured. Uh, there's nothing for for Black to play here, and it's just uh, you know a total annihilation here. So it was not an easy position to play, and and interestingly, uh, black never really put all that much uh, counterplay here. White really got a wonderful position, and then he converted it very convincingly. So, uh, as, as you've seen, it was uh, like the position was reached in 2002 by Anatoly Karpov. So, you know, uh, even even in 20, 2014, it still uh, you know uh, had some poison to it. So that was the one game Magnus lost. Uh, now let's check out the other one. The other one is uh, in the 2016 New York match against Sergei Karyakin. Uh, let me just uh, shift this, uh, where Magnus had the white pieces and also a, a very, very interesting one. Uh, let's see what happened in this one. So Magnus opened with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, knight to f3, and d5. We have e3 and now e6, the call system. Bishop to d3, and now Karyakin uh, strikes in the center with c5. We have b3 by Magnus, preparing to Fianchetto his dark square bishop, and bishop to e7. Both players castle here, and now bishop to b2. So this is all been played before nothing new here uh, we have b6 by karyakin uh, and now the the position is is a known one knight to b knight b to d2 and c4 are very well known moves here but the move magnus played uh, is not a known move uh, and it was uh, played then for the very first time uh, but it was also never played again after it was played in this game so magnus played d captures on c5 and it is now a completely new game already as of move eight so uh, one would expect that black would capture with the b pawn sort of to improve his presence in the center but Karyakin captures with the bishop uh, now the bishop uh, gains more activity and uh, well this is how he prefers to play it and okay knight b to d2 by magnus we have bishop to b7 queen to e2 developing the queen now connecting the rooks and knight b to d7 uh, Karyakin also needs to do the same if he wants to uh, get his rooks into the game we have c4 by magnus and now uh, Karyakin captures on c4 d captures on c4 knight captures on c4 and queen to e7 also getting ready to bring the rooks into the game so we have a3 uh, hoping to get that b4 move in as one always should uh, and of course uh, Karyakin stops this with a5 we have knight to d4 now and rook f to d8. Uh, so, of course, we have to activate our rooks now. Rook f to d1, rook a to c8, and now rook a to c1. And both sides have sort of completed their development. Uh, Karakin starts with knight to f8. Now the rook gains nice control of the d-file, and the knight is being shifted over to g6. We have queen to e1. 
uh, now preparing to bring the bishop back to f1 so white can also gain some control over the e-file with the rook knight to g6 and bishop to f1 so both players just putting their uh, pieces on optimal squares and this bishop on f1 although it seems a little bit passive it's it's actually quite active doing good work here and also guarding that g2 pawn against this monster bishop on b7 so here Karakin starts with knight to g4 as uh, not a lot of pieces here defending Carlsen's king side you you might consider some ideas like queen to h4 uh, nothing so barbaric but you know if white allows it we're, we're gonna play it of course uh, and here you could play something like h3 just say go back and then we're gonna place the knight on e5 maybe see a trade here and then uh, Karakin basically just improve the position of his knights but here we have knight to b5 by Magnus uh, so offering a trade of rooks along the d-file and the knight here on b6 uh, on b5 can be quite annoying uh, as white has uh, quite a lot of control over that d6 square but for the moment black also keeps uh, control of the d6 square uh, so here we have bishop to c6 interesting uh, move is queen to g5 but uh, it's very hard to, to make something out of this with that, that bishop on f1 being such a good defender so here one example why bishop to f1 is so impressive uh, so after knight to b5 we have bishop to c6 now putting pressure on the knight on b5 and magnus defends it with a4 we have bishop to d5 now uh, and bishop to d4 now offering a trade of dark square bishops we have bishop captures on c4 rook captures on c4 and now even bishop captures on d4 so uh, grabbing that uh, piece we have rook d captures on d4 now preparing to capture the knight on g4 and now rook captures on c4 we have b captures on c4 and the knight to f6 uh, so what do you play here well it's a it's a very interesting position but uh, you can't really claim that white got something out of the opening uh, there, there's really not all that much to uh, to do here the knight on b5 is somewhat impressive but uh, black's presence on the king side is also very very nice so here we have queen to d2 threatening to pick up the rook here and uh, Karyakin just brings the rook back to b8 uh, we have g3 by Magnus preparing to now fianchetto the light square bishop and grab hold of this diagonal uh, and now knight to e5 the f3 square was weakened so of course uh, why not threaten it right away we have bishop to g2 defending the f3 square and now h6 uh, by by Karakin and now how can Magnus continue this game it's uh, not easy to find uh, to find a playable move uh, as black is controlling a lot of squares probably you should continue with something very slow a move like maybe you know h3 or or something uh, but Magnus goes for f4 uh just attacking this knight we have knight back to d7 and now knight to a7 as the queen no longer guards this square now magnus is threatening queen to c6 to, to win some material uh we have queen back to a3 putting pressure on the a4 pawn and now knight back to c6 attacking the rook here and uh, where do you where do you uh, put this rook that's a very interesting question uh well obviously you could play rook to c8 which seems very interesting and even though the queen is guarding the e7 square uh, you're just not really sure that your queen will remain on this diagonal for, for a very long time. So uh, with good reason, uh, Karyakin plays a rook back to f8, and you'll see why this is so. And now with rook to f8, he's also kind of offering a draw. He's saying, okay, if you want, you can capture on d7, and this is a draw. If rook captures, we're going to give up two knights for a rook here, but then we also play queen captures on e3 with check. You can't go to h1 because you get checkmated, so you have to play king to f1, and then queen c1 check. Let's say king f2, and you're going to pick up the c4 pawn as well. Uh, it's a rook against the knight and the bishop where black is up two pawns, so it's a very very uh, very unlikely that white will be able to do anything here uh, so uh, like I said that rook to f8 move uh, Karakin played is basically a draw offer so here we have h3 instead Magnus not interested in a draw and now comes knight to c5 now you can see that the rook uh, here on c8 would wouldn't be very well placed because now the knight here blocks the queen's access to d7 square so knight uh, here would just be very very problematic so here king to h2 and now comes knight captures on a4 Karakin wins the pawn on a4 uh, and Magnus goes for the attack now we have rook to d8 and now comes king to g6 giving the king uh, a little bit more breeding room but the problem is you also allow Carlsen to grab hold of this diagonal so he plays queen to d4 now with the terrible threat of just capturing the knight so here we have king to g7 and now no you cannot capture the rook king captures and queen captures uh, the knight on f6 because you forgot that the queen was uh, 
still still guarding the rook on f8. Uh, I, I know you did. Don't, don't lie. Uh, so here uh, we have a uh, well a very interesting move here. Carlson just plays c5, and it's a move that seems to be doing a lot because the queen no longer guards the rook on f8, and now you are threatening something like rook captures, king captures, queen captures on f6, uh, and. Um, well, you, you just can't do all that much. If queen captures on c5, you can play queen captures uh, knight here. If knight captures, the queen still isn't guarding the rook, so the same uh, plan uh, is also working. But uh, there is one move that uh, Magnus completely missed here, and that's exactly what uh, Karyakin plays. That's rook captures on d8. And now, what do you play here? Well, there, there just isn't a good move. Uh, knight captures on d8, but now knight captures on c5. And now, all of a sudden, Karyakin is up two pawns, and there is not much uh, Magnus can do about this. Magnus finds the absolute strongest counterplay. He plays queen to d6, and now uh, Karakin does not find the absolute best way here. The best way is queen a4, you have to give up the b6 pawn, and after you give up the b6 pawn, now you play knight c to d7, attack the queen, and only after the queen moves, you're going to play queen to a3, and now... Uh, you, you can uh, continue playing this with your beautiful pass pawn, uh, you know, uh, just marching forward. So instead, after queen to d6, Karakin played queen to d3. It makes sense. He's up two pawns, so he wants to trade queens. And it seems like uh, it's... Uh, you know, a, a similar idea, if you, if you uh, capture on b6, you can even start pushing on a4 right away. Queen captures on c5, queen captures on d8, and your pass pawn will be winning. However, he missed Carlsen's idea completely, and that is knight captures on e6 check. And now the problem is you can't capture with the knight because the queen would hang, so you have to capture with the f-pawn. Uh, and uh, or you could move back king to h7 is also a move but then knight f8 check and now you can't go here because the knight hangs so you have to defend the knight and we have sort of a repetition here uh, so f captures on e6 was played now comes queen to e7 check king to g8 and queen captures on f6 so magnus still down in material those two pass pawns are incredibly scary but he does have a lot of pressure on these pawns here however they are defended the knight defends the e6 pawn and the queen defends the g6 pawn uh, so Karyakin can just start pushing, we have a4, and now we have e4 by Magnus. Uh, now the queen no longer guards the g6 pawn, so queen to d7, and now comes queen captures on g6 with check. Queen to g7 and queen to e8 check. We have queen to f8 and queen back to c6. Uh, so still still playing very, very, very strongly. Uh, queen to d8, guarding the b6 pawn. The knight still guards the e6 pawn, and Magnus has to continue pushing. He plays f5. Uh, we have a3. Karyakin wants to bring that uh, pawn all the way all the way to a1, of course. We have f captures on e6, and now uh, king to g7. Uh, we have e7 attacking the queen here. Of course, if queen captures, then we're going to pick up the b6 pawn. Uh, but there really isn't anything better because, well, you can't allow white to promote this pawn to a queen. So queen captures on e7. Queen captures on b6, attacking now uh, the knight. Uh, okay, the knight is defended for the moment, but we go knight to d3 uh, and queen to a5 now. Uh, so we're not allowing this pawn to, to be pushed anywhere. Uh, we have queen to c5 now, offering a queen trade. Magnus can't allow this because then the pass pawn will be too strong, impossible to stop. So queen to a6, putting pressure on the knight here, and now knight to e5. And here... Uh, is the move that really makes a difference, uh, but uh, but not for Magnus, uh, for, for Karyakin. Uh, here, Magnus played queen to e6, and this uh, simply will not do. There's a huge, huge problem with queen to e6. You guys, of course, know what that is. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the only winning move for Karyakin while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on figuring out that Magnus uh, is actually in Tzu Tzuang. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, H5. Uh, this is the, the only winning move, and it's uh, incredible. Uh, the problem with queen being on E6 is that you have no checks. Uh, you have no checks, and uh, you know if you try to move your queen somewhere else where you will have some checks, then then it will simply not be enough. For example, if you try queen to a6, now okay, you can start giving some checks. It's not enough. Queen to c3. We're gonna play queen b2, and now our pawn just becomes a queen, and there is no no sufficient counterplay. Queen b7 check. We can play king h6, and once another check is given, we can even block with knight to g6, and that's it. 
uh, queen b2, a2, a1, that's 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 a victory. Even if e5, uh, if you go for some bishop to e4 ideas, it's not enough. Just h4, we go after the pawn here. And even if the pawn is captured, we can capture on e5 with check, let's say, king g1, queen to a1 with check, king to h2, now a2. Uh, again, queen to e5 check is coming, and then we just bring another uh, uh, bring another queen into the game. So after uh, this h5 brilliancy by Karyakin, there doesn't seem to be a move that Magnus can play h4 was played uh, but here Karyakin just played a2 even though it seems like the white queen is guarding that pawn but it was in this position on move 52 uh, that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game as there really is nothing more uh, that he can do here. Uh, to, to give you an example if the pawn is captured let's say queen captures an a2 now this hole on the king side knight to g4 check is, is just deadly. The problem is if you go king to h1 uh, then you just get checkmated. Queen to c1, check. You don't have a square. You have to play bishop to f1, and now it's just checkmate. And if you don't, after knight to g4, check. You can play king to h3, but now queen g1, threatening a queen to h2, checkmate. The only move you basically have is bishop to f3, but now comes knight to f2, check, and you don't have a move. The pawn prevents the king from going up there. Also the knight, and you have to give up the queen. Captures, captures, and that's it. So... Uh, really, really an incredible, uh, incredible game where, you know, a game could have been drawn many times, but uh, both players uh, wanted that win. And it was Magnus who made the final mistake and allowed uh, Karyakin to, uh, to, you know, just bounce back. But it was interesting that uh, Karyakin, uh, as soon as he got into a winning position, he, uh, you know, he missed why, why it was winning uh, here where we mentioned that uh, this C5 move was played. Uh, it, it wasn't a good move and uh, just rook captures and not Knight captures was winning, but Magnus already found some deadly counterplay with queen to d6, and Karakin uh, failed to find queen to a4. Uh, but you know, who, 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 who wouldn't? Knight captures on e6 uh, just seems impossible because the knight also guards e6. I mean, who would, who would, uh, who would think that? Uh, but yeah, then Magnus bounced back, and then uh, in the end it was uh, uh, Karyakin who was victorious. And, uh, you know, everyone thought that this would be the year of Karyakin, because how could Magnus retaliate? But uh, only two runs later, uh, Magnus uh, won, won game 10, and then uh, later on he, he won the rapid tie breaks. Uh, so yeah, uh, those were the only two games Magnus lost in his World Chess Championship matches. So the one against uh, Anand in 2014 in uh, Sochi, Russia, and uh, the one against Sergei Karyakin uh, in, in the 2016. 16 match uh, in New York. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see what happens uh, in the fifth match against Nepo. Like I said, he's a bit of a, a more aggressive player. He said that, that they prepared something very special for the match. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, like I like I mentioned on Twitter, uh, the only two games Magnus lost in World Chess Championship match is playing D4 and playing against D4. So I imagine Nepo will choose for his game one tomorrow with the white pieces uh, the move one to D4. We'll see if this is so. Uh, uh, you know, but but it would make sense. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank Georgi. Georgi is a good lad. Uh, wish we will find the boat, Pito. Uh, Henrik Fola, uh, Shatran Club 2000, Given Manai, and Dan McCormick for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing, uh, uh, well, or rather starting the coverage of the World Chess Championship 2021 uh, between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Ponishi. Thank you all. Uh, uh, and see you soon.